Yeah, yesterday we discussed about uh, Deccan traps, the formations of a Deccan traps. Uh, it was uh, divided into the three stages. The classifications uh, we have uh, seen yesterday, the Deccan traps divided into the three stages, lower trap, middle trap, upper trap. Lower trap, it has a 150 meters. It concealed the uh, central province and the eastern uh, areas. Middle trap has uh, 1200 uh, meters. It concealed the uh, center India and Malwa. Upper trap, uh, it has a 450 meters. The formations are having here Mumbai and Katyava. The, uh, the structure, the trap is characteristic uh, by the flat hill tops and uh, step-like uh, traces. Those are step-like traces uh, we are calling those are all the traps. And it's also having some vesicular on a surface. These uh, vesiculars are uh, called amygdala amygdala and this amygdala is filled by the different mineralogical composition. At some places we have identified the columnar uh, joint sets in the traps. Now coming to the petrological uh, studies. The first uh, magma is uh, uh, erupt on a wider scale and it's uh, forming a major part of the Deccan drop. And it has a thoracic uh, and followed by the rhyolite uh, in fairly large proportions. And the igneous activity is uh, closed uh, with the final uh, eruptive phase of a minor uh, quantities of uh, the alkali, alvin basalt magma. The common uh, rock type is uh, basalt, black or uh, greenish black in color compact, sometimes uh, egg spits with a vesicular and uh, amygdaloidal uh, structure. The specific gravity, it varies uh, from 2.9 to 3.1. It is generally composed of uh, labradorite, uh, plagioclase and stratite. Alvin and uh, titani ferrous magnetite, it's occur access as accessory minerals. Yeah, again, it's uh, based on this uh, weathering of a product. The Deccan traps after uh, weathering, it gives rise to residual deposits. The first one, it is uh, laterite, and second one, it is uh, block cotton soils. Age of a Deccan traps. Yeah, the age of uh, Deccan traps, it's uh, almost, uh, it is uh, having the Entirely, it is unfossiliferous because of uh, it's uh, formed by the lava formation. Uh, so that uh, you know, we have a determined the intertropians so that it is a static uh, uh, position. And uh, so there is a lucky position. Uh, in at some places, it has a fossiliferous intertropian uh, bed. But there is a problem, but uh, uh, where uh, it's a Cretaceous to the uh, Eocene age, the age of uh, the contrast is based on the static traffic and the paleontological uh, uh, studies. And finally, radiometric age of the Deccan traps, it's uh, carried by the Washington in 1964. And a few uh, specimens of basalts of uh, Bombay area and uh, they have point like uh, the age around uh, it has a 60 to 65 million years. Yeah, economic uh, importance. Uh, basalts are widely used for building uh, construction. 
uh, and it has a uh, several secondary minerals in their vesicles like a quartz amethyst augite chalcedony etc which are used as a gemstones and some cavities also having the geolites and these geolites are uh, useful for uh, ornamental uh, purpose you see this is a step like a structure that can uh, traps or farms and the same it is a uh, seen as a columnar columnar uh, joints the basalt was formed in columnar uh, joints and again these uh, normal tectal traps layer by layer they were uh, formed here the deccan drop is one of the uh, important formation in indian uh, stratigraphy the, uh, the lava it is uh, erupted all along the fissian uh, crack in the surface of the earth uh, intermittently yes it is a so store for the house of uh, many minerals like uh, geolites augite uh, chalcedony amethyst quartz etc etc the ore of aluminum it's a bauxite it's formed by the weathering of a basalt and this is uh, about uh, deccan uh, basalts and next coming to the geology of andhra pradesh and the telangana Yeah, before discussing about uh, fossils, just we will see the uh, geology of Andhra Pradesh and the Telangana. This is uh, Andhra Pradesh. It's uh, bounded uh, by the north uh, latitudes, that is uh, 12 degrees and 41 uh, minutes, and uh, 19 degrees uh, 17 uh, minutes, and each longitude between. Uh, 77 degrees and 84 degrees and 40 minutes and also it is a boundary so having the uh, the north is the state of uh, telangana and that is this that where is the borders and west side it has a uh, uh, karnataka and uh, so south side uh, tamil nadu was uh, located and the other the state is has uh, approximately seven uh, 100 kilometers long of a coastal line and it uh, occupies an area about uh, 160,205 square kilometers and the Telangana is a lies uh, between uh, 15 degrees 50 minutes and 19 uh, degrees 51 uh, minutes And also, it is uh, located in the north uh, latitudes. And uh, when you come into the eastern uh, longitude, 77 uh, degrees 15 minutes and 81 uh, degrees 19 minutes in the east. And the Telangana state, it is uh, bounded uh, uh, on the east side and the south uh, by the Andhra Pradesh and the west uh, side. It, uh, uh, bounded by the Karnataka and north uh, northwest side by the Maharashtra, northeast uh, 
it has a statistical uh, state. And the state it is occupies an about area one lakh twelve thousand uh, uh, seventy seven uh, square kilometers. Physiography. The state of uh, Andhra Pradesh and the Telangana. It uh, forms uh, the peninsular field and it has uh, four uh, major physiographic divisions. Those are the uh, coastal plain and comprising the coastal districts. Eastern Ghats, uh, hill ranges running uh, parallel to the coastal uh, districts. Interior uplands in Nalamalai, Lankhamalai and the Palkonda, Shesha Jalam uh, hills. And plains mainly it has the Raya Sima, uh, these things. And this basin is covered by the maximum Godavari River. And it's a large part of the northern uh, half of the states, Penganga, Pranagita, Indravati, Mandira, or uh, tributaries uh, for the Godavari. And south of this state occupied by the Krishna, Tungabhadra, and uh, Penna River. The tributaries of Krishna is mainly Tungabhadra, Dindi, and uh, Mosi, while the Chitravati, Papagni, Chayeru, Sagleru, Nagavali, Gundakamma, Maneru, and uh, Swarnamukhi in Andhra Pradesh, Bhima, Maner, Panganga, uh, Akeru, Dindi, Manjira, Paleru, and Petavagu in Telangana state. And when you come into the geological uh, formations, in geological uh, succession, it has uh, started from uh, late Orkins. The late Orkins, it, it has a Darwar uh, group. And the mineralogical compositions are uh, amphibolites, intrusions of uh, granites. And these uh, intrusions of the granite we can uh, see in the Ramagiri, Khadiri, Gadwal, Nellur, cyst belts. And many proteozoites to late Archaeans. Here, uh, the group is uh, considering as the uh, Eastern Guts. And the rocks are uh, charnokites, condolites, pyroclastic uh, uh, rocks, and it has a metabed salt. And there is an apartheid unconfirmity between the uh, middle protozoic to uh, late Harkins. And above this is uh, apartheid unconfirmity, Carpathopus group was uh, formed, and it has uh, particularly the formations of a park house. And uh, if you come into the upper protozoic, it is uh, having the kernel group, and the kernel group uh, mainly it's uh, having the equal to the B mass. And when you come into this carbonic terrace, in the carbonic terrace, it has a lower quota formations and the malaria formations. Here, the Kamsi formation and Barakar formations. It, uh, it has. Uh, and when you go into this is a uh, uh, lower Cretaceous to upper um, carbon terrace, the gone one of privilege uh, we have to identify here. And then it has a upper uh, Chitiala formation, Gangapur formation. And it has a trivial uh, marine deposits. And Chitiala formation, if you see here, the Tirupati formation, Ragapura formation, Satyavedi formations will uh, uh, identify. And next is uh, coming to the lower years into the upper Cretaceous. In this geological time, it has a uh, groups of uh, Deccan tracts and uh, infra intertropians. Uh, Next one is uh, Myopliocene. The Myopliocene, the group of formations, uh, particularly it is a relation with the uh, Rajmandri formation, uh, relation to Myopleistocene. 
the group it is uh, having the alluvium cave deposits laterite river uh, terraces older alluvium place a deposit ash beds and including with the uh, beach and the soil formations we uh, see this rock you can identify into the uh, recent uh, age and in uh, both states telangana and andhra pradesh states the karpa group was uh, uh, formed the karpa super group and here uh, the nallamalai parkonda or uh, sesha selam hills which are formed together uh, with the plains in between the constituted it's consisting of uh, mainly quartzite shales limestones and some of the formations uh, from karnul super group in which are formed in the middle of protozoic uh, age they formed in the crescent uh, shape of karpa basin Yes, definitely. The Karpa Basin is uh, looking into the recent uh, shape formation, and the area it was uh, occupied forty-four thousand forty-four thousand five hundred square kilometers, and which are distributed in the parts of uh, Chittoor, Anantapur, Kadapa, Karnool, Mahabnagar, Nalgonda, Guntur, Nellore, Prakasham, and Krishna districts. and we know that uh, actually it was uh, divided into the uh, different uh, four uh, unit formations papagni chitravati nallamalai and uh, sri shelm project yeah again uh, both the states were uh, consisting of karnool pakal bima group of formations and when you come into this is a uh, uh, gondwana yes the gondwana also these both states are uh, having a bondwana gondwana in particularly in our uh, uh, and both states in the parts of uh, telangana it's extended uh, in azilabad karimnagar warangal and kammam and also the same uh, it was uh, formed in uh, west godavari it was located in andhra pradesh and deccan traps also we have identified the deccan traps it's a covered uh, uh, almost the area 10000 square kilometers in the parts of adilabad nizamabad medak mahabnagar and ronda rangareddy districts and it has a infra, infra and intertrapian bed and it is a noticed in the east and uh, west godavari districts and also a uh, little amount uh, identified in a uh, Hyderabad, Nizamabad, and Bangaradi districts. Yeah, there are some marine fossils also identified. Example for Turitella, Cardita, Bio Mount, Coastal area, and these are uh, covered in 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 front of in of the Telangana state. Yeah, there is a Rajamandri formation. It is called as a Rajamandri sandstone. Uh, uh, it's a consisting of a sandstones, clay, and lignite of a uh, myopleistocene. The age and it covers an area about eleven uh, hundred square kilometers, and it was uh, located in a uh, um, east and west east west Godavari districts. and some quaternary deposits also identified the quaternary deposits are well developed along the eastern coast of andhra pradesh especially in the mouth of uh, rivers the sediments are mainly black uh, sands with ilmenite magnetite garnet tourmaline rutile zircon and monazite as a heavy metal concentration mineral concentration along the beach Uh, rivers in beds of uh, Srikakulam and Vishakapatnam, Godavari, and in Krishna district, and some paleo channels of Chitravati and Penna rivers in Kadapa and Karnool 
Antapur districts, which are found in the source for uh, alluvial diamonds and gold deposits. Uh, coming to the mineral uh, resources, the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana are uh, endowed with uh, uh, min mineral uh, rich mineral deposits. The most economic uh, important uh, minerals are uh, oxide stock, barite, mica, copper, lead, ore. And uh, less deposits are apatite, clays, coal, corundum, diamond, feldspars, ochre, quartz, steatite, bauxite, etc. Yeah, there are uh, Mineral deposits were divided into the two classified. One, it is a non-metallic, and second one, it is a metallic. And finally, uh, fuel deposits also there. Uh, non-metallic uh, deposits in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, oh, most of the formation we have identified the oxide stuff. It is very valuable chrysotile variety of oxygen stars, which is occurred in the uh, Karapa district. And it was noticed between the Wimpel and Dolomitic uh, limestone and the Dolomitic seals. The oxygen stars mineralization is generally confined with the serpentinized zone. It is noticed along the upper uh, contact of a uh, Dolomite uh, seal. It's about uh, almost 20 kilometers uh, long belt uh, between uh, Brahmanapalli and Parnapalli. And next one, it is a barite. Barite is a very uh, important and uh, almost of the maximum barite, uh, about 96% of barite deposits in of the country. Uh, it's a producing uh, from uh, Andhra Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, and these uh, states also having. But uh, particularly when you come into this uh, Beret uh, Wien uh, uh, deposits, literally these are all uh, different, and mainly it is available in uh, Karnul, Anathapur, Kamam, and Prakashan districts. Almost uh, maximum uh, barrett deposits around about uh, at uh, seventy eight point eight million tons of ore. It is a yield uh, from Bangampet from the Karpa district. It is the single largest deposit in the world. And also we will get the mica, steatite, clays, limestones, ochres. Uh, when you come into the metallic deposits like uh, bauxite, copper, gold, manganese, and along with that one, the um, fuel deposits like uh, coal, oil, and the natural uh, gas, these are available in uh, both uh, states. And also along with that one, uh, uranium, it is also uh, identified. Uranium, we know that it is used in power generation purpose. It is used as a atomic fuel. And the uranium mineralization, it has been reported from Wempole Dolomite and Pulventula conglomerate. It was uh, reported from Tumarapalle, Rajakuntapalle in Karpa district. And also recently the uranium deposits were identified and reported from the Nalgonda district, which are located uh, nearby Devarkonda area. So AMD scientists were recently published the uh, uh, papers and they reported the same, the huge amount of uh, uranium uh, mineralization is identified in Devarkonda areas, particularly the area it is a 
Chitrial, Chitrial uh, village. They have explored and identified, estimated the ore reserves, and they calculated. Ore reserves and the post rock, it is a granitic terrain. Yeah, the, this is the about uh, mineral, uh, mineralogical uh, composition of uh, both states in Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh. And next, coming to the paleontology. In paleontology, we will discuss about the paleontology conditions for fossilization. There are various kinds of fossilization, like uh, unaltered remains, altered remains, and there are some pseudo fossils are there, and uses of fossils. This we will study and again one minute one minute and share this What is paleontology? Paleontology, it is uh, defined uh, as uh, the study of a uh, fossils. The study of a uh, fossils. A fossil is an uh, original material. The impressions, casts, or tracks of any animal or a plant, it is a preserved in a rock. After the original organic material, it is transformed or removed. So that based on this, the original and organic material, it is removed and it is covered by the another material. You see here the paleontology, it is divided into the two. The first one, it is, a, it is a speaking about the fauna that may be a, Paleozoology and next one it is a paleobotany, it is a flora. Uh, invertebrate uh, paleontology and uh, vertebrate paleontology. Here the invertebrate uh, paleontology, it is a uh, invertebrate means spinal cord, it's not developed in that one, and vertebrate having the spinal cord. And again, invertebrate paleontology, it is a two types. One, it is a macro fossils that is a deal by the macro paleontology. And second one, it is a micro paleontology. It is a speaking about a very micro fossils like the Goramini, Goramini, Terra, Protozo ones. Those impressions we will study. Your paleozoology means the study of the animal uh, remain organisms. Uh, paleobotany, it is a study of uh, fossil plants. I think, again, it has a uh, depend on the paleo knowledge. The study of the pollen grains and the spores. And again, uh, it has a micro paleontology, the study of a small fossils, including uh, paleonology and also foraminifera, radial area. Graptolites, theropods, theropods means gastropods, and crustaceans, etc. Et and etc. This is the evolution and uh, from the fossil uh, record. You see here the time it's uh, mentioning from basic converts. Here uh, from uh, Devonian period onwards, it was uh, started. Devon period, Mississippian, Pelivinian, and uh, Pompuan uh, period. 
can see there is a succession again it has a formation uh, width and age it is speaking 215 245 million years 208 million years and again up to recent it was a mentioned genozoic era up to mentioned up to here and it was started from the pre-cambrian to cambrian evolution and the fossils uh, uh, record the uh, age we know that uh, it was uh, having the around the 4.6 billion age the atmosphere it had a little free of uh, oxygen and it is including different uh, gases carbon dioxide h2o carbon monoxide hydrogen nitrogen ammonia hydrogen sulfide and uh, methane fossils range in the age from the old to youngest the youngest it is the holocene uh, epoch and the uh, old it is approximately the archean age you see here this is a uh, impression now uh, stromatolites it's a uh, 3.4 giga annum it is from the western australia uh, types of uh, fossils your yeah, fossils are uh, preserved and remains the traces of uh, living uh, things. Yes, at the time, uh, the fossils were uh, uh, lived and after they died, those were the preserved and its uh, remains. The remains means here the um, parts of a uh, animal the part, body parts of an animal it's a remain and it is a covered by the sedimentary formations and the maximum fossils we can able to identify in a sedimentary rocks only hard parts are the only parts of an organism that leads as a fossil exactly only hard parts only the body is uh, having the smooth parts and the hard parts. These are hard parts, only those remain. And it's uh, covered by the sedimentary material. So these uh, hard parts are lived as a fossil. The best example for this one, bones, shells, teeth, Seed and uh, food stems. You see here there are uh, mm, different types of fossils found in a rock. What are those? Moles, casts, petrified uh, fossils, carbon films, trace uh, fossils. Yes, the, every fossil, it's a required a, some environment to formation of a, as a fossil. A large bits of a sedimentary rocks, it is indicating as a parent marine or a aquatic or a semi-aquatic uh, environment. Sedimentary rocks form in uh, sediments and uh, are uh, hardened into the stone as the environment changed in response to changes in the climate or uh, geography. The presence of the fossils in sedimentary rocks 
it is indicating that the past environment and it's supported to their uh, life. Yes, at the time uh, the climate or climatic conditions are very important. The sedimentary formations are also examples for the uh, sand, silt, which are uh, suitable for uh, to preserve of uh, plants, body parts or uh, animal body parts. And at the same time, the climatology is also uh, giving the support to formation of the fossil. The presence of the fossils, the sedimentary rocks, it's indicating the past environment and supported life. Yes. If we will get a uh, fossil deposit or a fossil, and it's uh, giving the information about the past uh, environment, how it was uh, like at the time, and how the climate, climate, climate at the time. It is uh, giving the information what it's the previous was happened. This is a common uh, marine uh, fossil. It is a uh, ammonite. The ammonites were uh, dominate life on your egg, and it's uh, giving the information of how they were formed at the time. How fossils were formed for an uh, organism? It's to be preserved. It must be in an environment uh, free of uh, oxidation and uh, bacterial decay. Yes. It is, it, it is going to be preserved. It must be environmental free. It is free from uh, oxidation and uh, bacterial decay. If there is uh, oxygen, and then automatically the fungus it will be developed and the bacteria it will be developed so that whatever uh, body parts of the plant or animal uh, body parts it's going to be decayed in the presence of these two factors the first one it is oxygen in the presence of the oxygen it is going to be decomposed and it is getting the fungus and the second one, it is a bacteria or other microorganism will be attacking on the same uh, uh, part of the body. And then it is going to be slowly decaying or decomposing. So uh, based on this reason, the environment, it should be free from the oxygen, oxygen and uh, bacteria decay. And the organism, it must be quickly buried. Yes, 100%. The organism, whatever it was there, it should be quickly buried by the sedimentation and the sediment material. So automatically, it, the oxygen will not enter into that one. And the environments that are covered by the water are more likely to preserve organism. Yes. The best example for this one, Sam's deep lakes and uh, tar pits, oceans. Suppose if organism is uh, died, if it is in soft uh, parts, so that what is happening if, maybe if it is uh, availability of oxygen or maybe it is the availability of the bacteria decay, slowly it is uh, Attacking, attacking by this uh, bacterial, and this it will be going to the decomposed. So that is the reason. Hard parts are the very suitable to formation of a fossil. The sediment it becomes a rock, and preserving the parts of the 
organism. Yeah. Whatever the smooth are covered by the smooth parts or a smooth material by these organisms, those it will be decomposed and hard parts it will be remain. These hard parts are covered by the sedimentary formation. And finally, it is uh, the body parts when it is going to be preservation. It has a small uh, pores on their body and these pores were filled by the different uh, minerals. So that these uh, skeleton, it is formed as a mineralized uh, copy of original uh, organism. Yes, the weathering and the aeration, it will be exposed on the fossil uh, surface. The types of uh, fossils, molds, the molds, it uh, has a hollow area. And the shape of organism, it is a mold. A mold of a uh, mold forms The hard body part of organism, it is buried in a sediment. That it is uh, called as a mold. And when water it comes and it is uh, dissolved, the organism, the hollow, are left that it is a uh, shape. The virginal shape, whatever it is, uh, remains. And it is uh, formed as a mold. Yeah, you see here, maybe it is a nautilus. As it is a nautilus, you see this uh, picture of a nautilus. It is a preserved uh, the original formation. Next type, it is a cast. The water is carrying dissolved minerals and sediments. It may seep into the mold. The sediment may hard and take a shape of the mold and it is a making a copy of a fossil. A cast, it is a solid, solid copy of the shape, uh, either whatever it is a fossil or a organism. Actually the cast, it is the opposite of a mold formation. Both, either maybe it is a mold or it's a cast. Both are having the preservation details of a complete organism structure. And some petrified uh, fossils. See, the petrified fossils means here, the fossils which are fulfilled by the minerals or it is uh, replaced by the mineral in all the part of a organism. The water rich and dissolved the mineral seep in the space of the organism. Uh, if it is a war time, the mineral is to come out to the solution and uh, the hardens it fill into the spaces. And it uh, leads to organism to be preserved. And some carbon fillings. These carbon fillings are very thin coating of a carbon material or a carbon rock. When sediment is buried in an organism, some of the material that makes up an organism evaporate.
it's a uh, evaporate and also it's uh, becoming as a gases the gases escape from the sediment maybe it's a uh, leaving carbon or uh, whatever maybe eventually only thin layer of carbon it is uh, left behind uh, it's helps the in the preserving of the organism and again we have uh, some trace fossils the trace fossils provide the evidence of the activities of a uh, ancient organism yes this trace fossils it's uh, giving the information previously what type of uh, climate it is there and what it is a uh, environment and how the elements were uh, lived at the time the traces it's uh, giving the information and uh, evidence and what were the ants and organisms were developed at the time and how they were lived at the time in the same uh, climate and environment the example for this one footprint uh, it is a example for the trace fossils from the trace fossils scientists can uh, investigate uh, so many things a prehistoric uh, organism size diet what it is a uh, diet and what was the environment and what was the behavior of uh, organisms the scientist it's uh, estimate very easily the external processes sir it's a uh, preserve the the remains of uh, organism with a uh, no change nothing change yes sometimes maybe the complete body it was a uh, preserved the preserved the remains of organisms there is no change uh, including with the uh, tar amber and uh, ice material within the that there is no scope to change the original shape what's the use of the fossil record yeah definitely it is a uh, useful for the paleontologist and the scientist to study the fossils and all the information that uh, uh, paleontologists have uh, gathered about the past life it is called as a fossil record and the fossil records to provide the evidence what about the previous history what is the past life and what was the past environment and what was the past climate on the earth and it's showing the different group of organisms how they were uh, changed their life according to the climate 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 and environment is the presence of a coal in antarctica it shows the uh, uh, climate and there was a once a warmer and scientists use the fossil record to support the theories of the how uh, living things have changed over uh, time and it's a uh, giving the information the relative age of a rocks and there is maybe a chance to comparison and study of a different uh, rock age and a fossil uh, widely distributed and represents 
the type of organisms that can uh, exist in only uh, it's a briefly it is called as a index fossil index fossil means it is uh, giving the particular time and it is it's uh, giving the representative time at the time only such type of uh, animals were uh, lived and these are also useful for uh, to identify of a uh, relative of a uh, age rocks and it's uh, giving the information about uh, the time of uh, how the environment was uh, formed and this is all we have uh, seen Pseudo fossils that is also we need to study. This is all the mammals, mammals, eyes in the eyes, eggs. You see here the elephant, how it was a uh, buried. You see, uh, and eyes in eyes, eggs, woolly mammals from the Pleistocene. Epoch have been a farmed frozen in Siberia and Alaska. Everything it was uh, preserved here skin, hair, soft tissue, and all those. And they lived from the Pliocene epoch, about around uh, 5 million years ago. This we will see. Carbonization also discussed. And gold and cast also discussed. Yeah, this is a picture you see here. Molds. How they were formed in the past the picture. It's a clam. The original formation of the clam, this one. And you see here the after the Preserved the same in a sedimentary material. And you see here, this is a snail. And after the fossilization, the snail, you see how it was uh, stored. Trace so fossils also we discussed. And one more, we need to discuss about the. Uh, no, this is pseudo fossil. The pseudo fossil means here, pseudo meaning it's a fake, fake fossil. Actually, uh, some of the raindrops are if it is a uh, fall on a sediment material and it's uh, showing. Uh, the raindrop, how it was a fall on a sediment formation, like a dot, in the form of a dot or a small hole. It will be stored the same. It will be stored as well uh, how raindrop was a form or a fall on the sediment formation. It will be showing like that only. So many of a rock, it's uh, showing the rock uh, structure, look like as a structure, fossil's body. But actually it is not a original fossil. So such type of uh, fossils are uh, called uh, to sort of fossils. Yeah, the following uh, represents a few sedimentary features that may be confused uh, as a uh, fossil. It may be from a uh, different uh, weathering material, nodules, and uh, uh, when you come into the nodules, maybe it is a chet nodules also, it's a looking like that. Chet nodules means it, it is a uh, quartz formation. 
and concretion six also so uh, looking the same then right and uh, these are all the some examples for the trace passes The classification of a fossil. Where is the classification? It's a member of a species, or it's able, or able to the interpret and the giving the information. The paleontologists, it's a lacking of evidence of a reproductive isolation of an ancient species, and then the focus on the morphological definitions of a species. the various uh, groupings are there in a classification of the fossils example for the uh, kingdom kingdom into the phylum phylum into the class class into order order into the family family into the uh, genus and the species example for the animalia animalia kingdom phylum it is a chordata non chordata it's a chordata Class for mammalia. Order is the primates, chordates. Oh, uh, the genus is the uh, Homo, and the species sapiens. Homo sapiens. It is uh, about a uh, uh, human uh, classification. And here uh, in vertebrate uh, groups, sponges, cynthians, and uh, sponges means it's a uh, phylum uh, Porifera. and nidarians it's a nidaria phylum phylum brachiopoda it's a both uh, articulate and the inarticulate and bryozoans uh, bryozoans like it uh, um, mollusk mollusk is the phylum it is uh, mollusca and we have a Cephalopoda and uh, gastropods. Yeah. Here, invertebrate invertebrate uh, groups. If you can uh, see this, in this one, arthropods and arthropods are the class of Crustacea, class of uh, Trilobita. And echinoderms, if you go into the echinoderms, it's a phylum uh, echinodermata. It has a starfish and echinites. This is a classification of uh, invertebrates. You see here sponges, corals, gastropods, bivalves, ammonites, natalites, belemnites, brachiopods, or uh, trilobites. Crustaceans, insects, and other uh, fossil uh, anthropods, graptolites, echinoderms. And from here, it's a uh, relation with the molluscans, molluscans into cephalopods. Again, the cephalopods, it will become into the uh, nautnites, nautlites, belemnites. And uh, you come into the uh, arthropods. In arthropods, trilobites. Crustaceans, insects, and uh, other fossils. And these are all these uh, remain, uh, all it will become under into the molluscum. You see, this is a mollusca kingdom. And we have. In the classification of Coronicera uh, and the class of Mollusca. It's a Mollusca formation. One minute, please.
studies uh, for how many morphological studies of for how many terra? The micropaleontology is uh, concerned with this uh, uh, micropossils and uh, nanopossils. And the remains of a unicellular, uh, multicellular of the microorganisms. And it's a disassociation with the elements and the skeletal fragmental uh, microorganisms. And it's a consisting of the following types Foraminifera, Ostrides, Coccolithifera, Diatoms, Dioria, and uh, Dinoflagellates. Among uh, this, Foraminifera, it's a uh, Foraminifera means the whole barrier on their uh, body. And there's a single celled uh, protest and uh, uh, with the uh, shells, which can have either one or uh, multiple uh, chambers. And foramina are found in uh, all marine environments. They may be the planktonic or benthic mode of their uh, life. And based on this is a diversity and abundance, and it has a complex uh, morphology. The fossil foraminiferal assemblages are useful for biostatigraphy to study of uh, biostatigraphy and uh, can give accurately relative dates to the rock to identification of the petroleum and uh, uh, paleoclimatology study. Uh, this is a history of uh, foraminiferans. Uh, the foraminiferida is a derived from the foramen. And it's a connecting hole through the well. And the study of the foramen has a long history. And it's a mentioned uh, Eratodus, fifth century before Christ. And the Egyptian pyramids uh, contain the large bentonic foramen that's uh, nummulites. Uh, let us see the morphology. The kingdom, it is the protista. Phylum Protozoa, subphylum it is a Sarcodia, class is Rhizopoda, order is a Foramini Peridia. Foramini parents are a single celled uh, animals and it is uh, protected by the hard shell of a different types of a material. And it has a uh, sometimes a uh, cantinous material, carcareous, and other uh, ciliaceous, ciliaceous materials also which they have. Uh, animal consists of a uh, cell. It's a soft part of a foraminifera. It has a protoplasm, um, uh, protoplasm within the shell. It has a uh, test that is uh, having the endoplasm, dark and uh, granules, and it's contain one or more nuclei. Uh, the systems uh, for uh, cell secretion and uh, systems for a gas exchange that is a gas exchange by it's a using by the mitochondria and protein synthesis with uh, uh, ribosomes and you see here this is a granular uh, endoplasm there is uh, some nucleus uh, internal body of these structures we can see here the nucleus it is after a perpetual plug and uh, granular exoclose pseudopodia and wall structure and composition. The wall structure and composition it has a kinetic wall, aglutinated wall, and some are having the uh, calcareous uh, walls and. It's an example for the wall structure in foramini terra. And these are all the shells, uh, these are all the preserved material. And it's a giving the information of a paleoecology, how it was there at the time. Uh, it has been uh, estimated more than 18,000 species of a foraminifera and 
foraminifera are usually extremely sensitive to environmental conditions so such as the temperature, salinity, and bathymetry, etc. and etc. Uh, geologically, it was uh, distributed in Cambrian uh, uh, age. <coughs> it was uh, found in the sediments uh, are all these ages uh, ranging from the Cambrian to recent. And some of the found in uh, Cretaceous and some of the found in the tertiary to the uh, recent. And these are the uses of uh, foraminifera. And it's useful for to study of uh, age and what were the sea types in the ancient sea seas, how they were uh, formed, what it was, what was the life based on these okay, uh, foraminal posits. We can able to study the paleoclimatology at the time and the paleo oceanography. And this is about the uh, foramini pera. And next uh, we see the Oh yeah, next coming to the cephalopods. Yeah, this is a cephalopods. It's including of uh, ammonites, nautilites, belemnites, and uh, squids. Most are the necronic uh, animals. And cephalopods uh, uh, extinct group are the ammonites and belemnites. It's a completely relation of uh, shallow and deep uh, marine water and the geological age it is uh, uh, it was uh, from Cambrian to present the morphology of a cephalopod shells we see here yeah the structure it's a secreted by the mantle of a cephalopod for a protection purpose and a neutral uh, buoyancy it is called the shell. Uh, shell, it was uh, not present in uh, octopus, but in all the organs which are having the shell. And the complete shell, it is a basically a hollow comb with two major parts. Uh, the body chamber, or it is called as a living uh, chamber. And next one, it is a uh, Pragmocone. The opening uh, on the large end, it is called uh, as a aperture. And the apex is uh, uh, at the tip of the small end. And the shell or a test, which is a uh, forms in the form of a um, cone, it is called as a shell wall. The orientation is lateral is between the ventral and the dorsal. Longitudinal is, is an interior to posterior directions. And transverse, it is in your dorsal ventral directions, it will be useful. And body chambers, uh, chambers, septa, prefinkles extend from the mantle to upper. And uh, these uh, sprinkles, which are uh, having the about uh, eight to ten tentacles, and it is also having the funnel. The edge of the aperture it is uh, called as a peristome. See here, we see here, and these are all the chambers. And uh, outer body it is uh, covered by the shell. And these uh, tentacles. Mouth, um, 
which we this is the mouse and inside of this is a mouse it has a uh, radula and upper part it is called as a jaw and the small brain uh, it was located here and between this is a mouse the funnel was there and this is a funnel inside of this is a funnel it has a grill and here a uh, annex nephridium and a small in it has a small part of intestine and the heart valve was also developed and it is a ovary and this is called a digestive gland and one more part uh, here we see the uh, pickle yeah mm. it's a uh, internal structure and this is the shell it is showing the outside it is showing the outside Uh, this all about uh, uh, morphology of a uh, cephalopod, and there is a septal uh, suture lines. The septum it is attached to, to the shell wall along the suture, and it is uh, seen as a series of a uh, simple to complex lines. It has uh, some complex uh, lines. And internal uh, molds. Parts of the suture line are directed uh, do uh, or it's a the term we are calling that is a sad face. And uh, we call uh, it's a directed to the adapical link. It is called as a dope. Arthroceratic sutures. These are relatively simple, having shallow lobes and a sad list. And again, we take a suture, it has a broad lobes and sad list with a narrow and a mid ventral lobe. Goniatic sutures have a strong, mostly angular lobes and the angular to rounded sad list. And one more, it is a ceratitic suture. It is the ceratitic suture to have a strong rounded and sadless and serrated lobes. Ammonitic sutures have a complex uh, lobes and sadless. These are the suture uh, lines. You see here suture lines. This one, it is uh, ammonitic, it's a serotitic, goniotitic. Gynotitic and ortho ceratitic shell shapes. Uh, not right shells uh, can be planet squarely coiled. And it's a have the card coil shells or exo gastric. And it has a venture. And endo gastric is a dorsal uh, side or a dorsum and again it's a it is in the convex and uh, located at outer side the cross sectional shape is a whole and a section can be it's a round oval square a rectangular triangular and the lanceolate uh, shaped it's a tablet with a flattened enter complex uh, shells uh, sharply laterally and uh, depressed you see here uh, the whole uh, section shapes yeah here it says uh, umbilical uh, wall and umbilical seams the umbilical uh, shoulder the umbilical shoulder where it is a shell wall uh, bends towards to the preceding wall uh, these straight and enclosed at the both side of a last form, it is a term as umbilicus, which are having the very curved shapes. 
cells with a wide umbilicus uh, are termed evolute and uh, shells with uh, a narrow umbilicus are termed in involute the umbilical seam is where the shell wall attaches to the preceding wall the umbilical wall is between the umbilical shoulder and the umbilical seam the umbilical uh, dia is also there the umbilicus actually Uh, here it was uh, located it's a fold width and this is uh, this part is completely umbilical uh, part it has a umbilical wall and it is a uh, umbilical seam it, uh, it is a uh, umbilical uh, shoulder straight shells are ortho scenes curved uh, shells are uh, uh, nitro scenes And this all about uh, shells, and uh, again here shell shapes. These are all the shell shapes. Okay. These are all the known it. And let's go into the what we said. Here Ramona is uh, mentioned. Monides, it's not there. Uh, we see the particularly gastropods. We go to into the gastropods. This is several parts of the melanites. Uh, it's a several parts of the bivalve. Yeah. A pair of a valves, right and left, which are having valves which articulate along the dorsal hinge line. There is no head, typically bilaterally, it is a symmetric prominent uh, ventral port. The classes are based on the classes of a bivalve. Bivalves include tombs, muscles, oysters, and uh, scallops. You see here the ventral uh, formations. These are all about uh, bivalves. The reforming of a bivalves. It is a uh, fossilization form. Yeah, next coming to the gastropoda. The most uh, diverse uh, group, almost it has a 16,000, 60,000 species. And it has a single shell, mostly it's a right-handed uh, spiral. It, especially it has a right-angled uh, handed uh, spirals. And it has a torsion, fresh and salty in, uh, environment that are having. And the uh, age is about around the geological uh, uh, age, came into recent. You see, these are all the examples for this one. Gastroports are the well developed heads, ports upon which are found the eyes and mouth containing the uh, radula in front and above the mantle uh, cavity lies uh, the vessel market and it's contained the simple heart kidneys and the gut and the digestion uh, takes place in an outer portion of the gut is uh, called the digestive gland and waste it is expelled uh, as a discrete pellets in the formation of a uh, excrete uh, in the pellets 
from the anus and the brain is consisting of a nerve and it's surrounding the esophagus and two pairs of uh, nerves arise uh, from, from it. One pair serves the gut and another one serves the large muscular uh, Digestion takes place in uh, our pouch in the and uh, other sense organs including the simple uh, balancing organ. It's uh, called uh, tartosites and it has a pair of uh, osprodia and which may be uh, sensitive uh, to water. And uh, you see uh, this is a picture of this one. The mouth, uh, which is uh, somewhere, the intestine or the stomach, and the anus, which was opened here. And from this one, the discrete pellets will be raised. Yeah, you see this. The eyes were uh, settled here, located here. On the tentacles, the having eyes, mouth, and it has a radula. And lungs were also developed here. There is the gland intestine and uh, one or this outer nulla part is covered by the shell. And heart was also developed and it's a top. The gastropod shells are mainly made up of calcium carbonate, uh, aerogonite or uh, calcite. These are all the pictures of uh, gastropods. It has a shell, operculum, foot, and the eye. Tentacles will be also there here. And uh, see, it is the uh, apex and the inner aperture. And the uh, phenolal notch, it was here. And some uh, major changes we uh, identified here, development of a head, dorsoventral elongation, shell from uh, shield to the re -treat. Next one is ancestor, regarding this is ancestor. And plan is parallel coiling. So, name it this one. Yeah, shell, it has an apex whole uh, columnella aperture and uh, siphonal uh, canal, quiet body hole and the outer lip inner, and it has an upper lip opercular also. Uh, the moment it's a locomotion, it's a most it is a using a foot. Most of it's uh, ciliated as well and the secretory glands. And uh, mucous material, uh, mucous material is will be producing by this uh, gland. And plus uh, for gastropoda, there are uh, three groups in this one. Prosobranchs. Opistobranchs, uh, columnates. Uh, the marina gastrophorus are uh, patella, litorina, buccinium, turritella. These are the uh, patellas. And the patella, it is a uh, genus of the sea snail with say, gills and a typical two limpets. It's a marina gastrophor. And it's the uh, and uh, it was uh, from a previous scene to now. It's oval uh, shell shape has, and it's a uh, litorina. The age it was from Jurassic to now. Uh, it's a uh, turtella. Turtella, it's a pre Cretaceous to present. It has a multi-fold shell. 
it is a genus of a medium sized uh, sea snails with an operculum. Marine gastropod molluscus. The family it is a turtle lady. Nautica. This uh, Nautica it is a genus uh, of a small uh, two medium uh, predatory sea snails. It is also marine gastropod in the family. It is a natty, natty, kiddie. Uh, some uh, fresh water gastropods, swan orbits. This is the structure of this one. And the kind of dermata, dermata. Echona dermata means uh, spiny. She is spiny skin and the skin it is a look like uh, uh, spines. It's a completely marine animals. And uh, these uh, having the radial symmetry and five parts of uh, symmetrical and many of uh, having the five or multiple uh, arms. It's a lack of uh, body segmentation. And here, This having the uh, shell made mainly it is a calcium carbonate and it's uh, covered by the skin. Echinodermata. Uh, uh, it's, these are all the exclusively which are lived in a uh, uh, marine. And the uh, geological age came then to recent. Water uh, vascular uh, system. It is having seawater is uh, taken into a system through the canals and it is uh, used to extend the uh, uh, tube feeds. Seas so have a uh, suckers and their tips and aid the animal into attaching itself to solid surfaces around uh, about uh, 6,000 species. All those are all the lived in marine. There are five um, classes in Echinoderms, sea arkins and the sand dollars, echinoidea, sea lilies, it's a crinoidea, sea star, uh, starfish like, and it's a uh, asteroidea, brittle stars, popiridae, and sea cucumbers, polothuridae. The groups of these uh, uh, Echinoderms. You see the first one it is a uh, stars, second one brittle stars, sea urchins, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, and the crinites. Yeah, class the crinidia. You see, this is a uh, in a cry crinoids are animals which are resembled of look like as a uh, flowers. You see, it's uh, having the whole past and columnal strength. And this part it is called as a cup and it has arms. The geological time it is a middle came brain to recent and abundant in a Mesozoic era. This is a structure, it's a fossil of a crane idea. And these are all the uh, econoderms from uh, different class classifications. It's all the same. Next. It is a starfish uh, Australia, carnivorous arms, muscles, bivalves it has, and motile by the two feet. Endoskeleton made up of a calcium uh, calcareous plates and grids through the uh, skin grills. It has a skin grills. Uh, 
trilobites. The trilobites of the first evolved in the lower Cambrian and became the extinct by the end of the Permian. You see, it, uh, these were uh, lived in the Cambrian uh, period, that was maybe 550 million years ago. And again, it uh, will be come up to uh, Permian uh, period, almost all uh, it uh, has a 250 million years age. And they all uh, lived in the Cambrian Ordovician and the Silurian uh, age. Mm, actually, they have no modern equivalents for this one. An understanding to study of the soft body parts. It could be based on the modern uh, day counterparts that showing the similarity. Uh, it's uh, related to the crustaceans. They are all completely marine. There are um, these all having the three lobes. All trilobites it's, um, bear a long the central axial lobe. This uh, long central axial uh, lobe. Plant on each side by right and uh, left plural uh, lobes. And these uh, three lobes run from the cephalon to the bizidium or what to give a trilobites their name. Uh, so the common to all the trilobites, that despite the greater diversity of uh, size and uh, form. The main body parts of a cephalon, it is a head here, it was here, and segmented with the thorax. This one, it is segmented with the thorax, and finally, it has a related with the pygidium. It's a end of this part, it is a tail piece. And this is the complete structure on the uh, anterior and the posterior of these is the trilobite you see here. Axial to cephalon, thorax, and pygidium. There are three parts. And uh, you see here the eyes, uh, which are located here. Face the structure it has, general uh, angle, acetal ring. All those parts were uh, uh, shown here. Yeah, this is the uh, The fossil of this is the trilobite. The paleontology and the life habits. Trilobites are more common in the marine limestones and the shales. And uh, this role were uh, formed in the paleozoic uh, age, especially from the Cambrian uh, period. And most of the trilobites were. Uh, Epiphanal. Uh, although they occupy the wide variety of exclusively marine habitats and specific life uh, habits are difficult to defend by the morphology uh, alone. And this was about uh, uh, trilobites and gastropods also. Graptolites, graptolites, these uh, graptolites uh, It has a theca arranged based on the theca arranged. These are also belongs to the vertebrate animals. 
it's uh, having the primitive characters of vertebrate animals. These animals belong to the phylum of a hemithorbic. The kingdom it is uh, a animalia. Phylum is a uh, hemichordata, and the classes are uh, Enteronymoseta and Terobranchia, Graptolithnia. The Graptolithnia it uh, belongs to the Graptolites. In the orders, there are uh, various orders: Dendrodia, Cubodia, Camarodia, Solonodia. Crustodia and uh, Graptodia, these. Uh, some morphological uh, features. It has a dendroid uh, part and it is uh, indicating the disciplines, nema and uh, sicula, stipend, theca. And these are the morphological uh, features. And uh, particularly, if we can uh, see the geological history of uh, these, the graptolites is a begin with a simple dendroid uh, forms, where in uh, upper Cambrian, and the main development of these are uh, graptolites in the Ordovician and. These have a secondary minor uh, acme during into the Silurian age. Nearly all the uh, species into two periods are in a different. Uh, few uh, oh. Stragglers which are the, um, persisted through the Devonian and uh, possibly into the early Carbonic eras. The disappearance in the close of the Silurian and the beginning of the Devonian, maybe it's perhaps be corrected with the advent of, of fishes which appeared in a great number at the time. But finally, the graptolites uh, which are uh, lived in an upper Cambrian. And it has a paleontological uh, records also. And some of the graptolite skeleton is consisting of a group, a series of uh, penetrate chamber, and it is uh, arranged in the series uh, along the branch type. The graptolites uh, divide into the two groups uh, called as the uh, axonophora. And the groups of uh, animals is extinct and it's uh, dominant during the Ordovician period. And the few are uh, uh, seen in Silurian and Devonian. Now, actually, this is about a uh, uh, brief history of uh, graptolites. And one more. Pelicopods and the brachiopods. Uh, just uh, you see the uh, these uh, pelicopods, which have uh, personally it's a group of, named as the bivalve by the Linnaeus in 1758. It has a shell morphology. The shell morph depend on the shell morphology. It's having the inline uh, structures and um, cardinal uh, area areas, and it, based on the hinge types, it's a uh, taxodont, actodont, actidont, disodont, heterodont, uh, preheterodont, isodont. These are there are eight types are there. And geological history of uh, this one, mostly it's a oldest identification fossil skull spot system. So the quadrilateral edges were uh, came.
and some of the spaces we can uh, identify in a devonian also and some brackish water it's uh, appear in a great uh, number after the paleozoic uh, formations yeah, most carboniferous falsified shells are general not generally preserved probably because of the shells aragonite being a compost of a relatively unstable in the form of a calcium carbonate so it is a, a slowly it is going to be uh, decomposed so that uh, uh, very few uh, parts of these uh, pulse parts uh, available as a fossil um, and some uh, Exogaira, Griffia, Ionoceramus, Reputerites, and the Protoaxium, Rheodorites, these uh, are available as a little amount of uh, uh, fossils. And next, uh, Brachiopoda, and this is also have, uh, depend on the cell uh, morphology. And the morphological features, it's uh, having the dorsal brachial uh, wall thickness, and uh, pedicel valve, it has a pedicel valve, ventral and posterior, and steri anterior. And it has a foramen, foramen length width, uh, growth lines, and these are all will be uh, there. And uh, brachiopoda classification, it's a class, it's a articulate and articulator. Uh, that's a uh, artemita family sir is uh, having the lingulacea primalacea and uh, neotermata the families are again uh, acrotritacea uh, siphonotritacea dyskinesia and crinacea when you come in this is a uh, articulata and uh, paleotermata families prostylacea uh, protometa and uh, uh, telometata. The families are uh, various types, periferacy, terapetulacy, dinosilacy, pentaperacy, proactiacy, arthotiacy, cotogianacy, um, antrepanacea, these all will be there. And the geological history about the brachiopods. Mm, brachiopods have a long geological history extending from Cambrian to the recent. And the greatest uh, importance uh, they attained in uh, Paleozoic and reached the clim climax of their uh, longer career, Ordovician and uh, Silurian. And around 70% uh, of recent uh, genera it's known as again it's just 1700 fossils were uh, identified and this is uh, about a uh, brief history of uh, brachiopods and i'm uh, stopping here